Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Bubba Green, aka Pabloon, and today we're taking a look at the Tier 9 Panation battleship Sun Yat-sen. And this thing has a helicopter. Helicopter, helicopter! The Sun Yat-sen does not have a functioning helicopter. It's a cosmetic thing, but it looks cool. It's a Seahawk helicopter. It looks like it, but I mean, it's not. It's a Chinese ship. Anyways, the Sun Yat-sen is a Sovetsky Soyuz battleship hull but it gets 457 millimeter guns in a 3x2 configuration meaning it only has six guns but these guns get precise aiming to and defensive fire to this thing has pretty good aa and the secondaries are actually also quite nice but the main thing is these 457 millimeters can shoot a reload in 17 and a half seconds this is a very fast reload for these big guns so that's pretty nice. Good range as well, 15.2. The secondaries, I like I talked about, they have a 152 millimeters and they reload in six seconds with seven and a half kilometers of range, which is pretty insane. Now the AA is also good, but it's you know, it's good against the Manfred, it's good against the Haku, but Malta's midways and stuff like that is gonna be, you know, dreadful. This is the historical camo, very boring, and this is the Sun Yat-sen 2059. They have the same stats, again, just like the Rondi. Nice wargaming, I appreciate that. It's kind of like they listen to my video. I don't know if that's true, but I, I like to think that. We take range in the elite bonus. For the equipment, I take dispersion, ac acceleration, and steering. And then instead of taking detection, I actually went for steering because you have 17 and a half seconds of reload and the detection bloom is 20 seconds. So you would never go undetected if you keep shooting. Now the commander is a CV commander. I know that, but I don't have any other commanders. So I just didn't take the skills that he boosts. We take marksman because you could get more salvos in if you have marksman. Honor secret, demo expert, and APCS with Citadel Strike. This is a pretty standard build. And even against tier 10s, this thing can hold its own, I would say. It's a pretty interesting little BB. So the game we're playing here is against two bots, the CV and the Montana, and I will be farming some damage on them. So the damage number is, you know, a little bit inflated, but it is... You can take my word for it, this is a pretty consistent BB. Now, the dispersion in this game does not reflect the dispersion I had overall. Sometimes with six gun battleships, you do have a tendency to get really bad dispersion. But this thing has precise aiming two and you get three uses. Even if you take fire supremacy, you can get four. That would be a viable strategy, honestly, um, because you do have a very fast reload of 17 and a half seconds like we saw in these stats. But I went for the uh, the healing and we did take marksman because I want to be able to get two salvos off in my precise aiming. So we're pushing down here the flank, and we are playing encounter, so sometimes pushing isn't a half-bad strategy. We have a Minotaur pushing where the DDs are going to be coming from. He's smoking up instantly. I kind of like that because he can just be a, a you know, radar picket, you can kind of call it, even though Minotaur does not have a radar. He can spot any DD, and he definitely does do that. So we see that there's a Fletcher who smokes up, and we see the bot Montana. So I'm just going to take some pot shots at the Montana, and we see that the dispersion is actually quite decent. We are definitely able to hit him and we get a Citadel right off the bat on a Montana bot. So this game was probably one of the more entertaining ones I had. I definitely had a lot of games that I found fun with this ship. Um, especially tier 8 battles are really interesting because you have 457s. Um, which, I mean, it's like a Musashi, right? Except you don't have as many guns, but... You get, you get more skills, and I was talking a little bit about the AA. The AA on this ship can shoot down definitely tier 9 planes, especially Taihos and, you know, the, what's it called, the SX. They are able to, the Audacious, they are able to shoot down those planes. Once you get to, get up to Midway and Malta, you are going to be facing a little bit of difficulties. But Manfred von Richthofen, Hakuryu's, Nakimov's especially, you can definitely shoot down planes. And I've gotten many clear skies with this ship. Now this is just a bot CV and um, we, I'm just activating my AA because I want to farm team points. It's uh, it's an easy way to get the MVP. If you have good AA, just, I mean, even with just a bot, there's no reason not to shoot down the planes and get some points for that. So. The only target that's really up for us is this bot CV. We're going to take some shots, activating our precise aim. And again, we get pretty decent dispersion. Two citadels and a bunch of full pens. All six shells hit. 
that was a pretty nice salvo and I've played versus many CVs also players they these guns are very consistent I, I like this of course we are playing with a you know max level commander he does have APCS but I want to showcase what the potential of this ship is and I honestly have to think this is going to be a powerful ship in tier 9 rank it's um it's interesting with these pan asian battleships or ships in general the wukong was also a ship that i got randomly and really actually enjoyed playing it's um it's a charles motel copy with deep water torpedoes and torpedo reload and this is a sovetsky soyuz copy with precise aiming 2 and good aa and of course the massive 457s so we have three battleships all pushing th towards us except for the lepanto who is kind of you know, hiding behind the two battleships, Schlieffen and Yamato. Schlieffen is pushing quite aggressively, so we uh, take some shots on him. We saw the hits on the Panto also were all pretty nice full pens. The Hayate shoots his torpedoes and he's, you know, gonna disengage again, so we're feeling pretty good, and now we're just gonna keep shooting at the Schlieffen. Notice how fast these guns are reloading. 17 seconds. This is why this ship is very fun. It is a very fast reload for a such such a big caliber of gun. And me and this Black Republic are just chilling right here, you know, kiting away, turning, you know, each other in a different direction. We're not hitting each other. This was actually, well, he hits us here, but, you know, barely. It actually helps him turn and dodge the torpedoes. It's kind of like a dance. We, me and this Black Republic just, you know, we chilled out. We just hang back and farm damage from the far side of the map. And our team is pushing up, which is lovely. I see the Fletcher and I'm like, well, I might as well just shoot this guy. If we get some full pens, it's going to hurt him a bit. But then we notice the Hayate has repositioned and gotten in front of us. This is actually a little bit dangerous. But the Sun Yat-sen is a pretty maneuverable, well, not pretty maneuverable, but it, it's not the worst ship to turn around in. And that is also why I took the steering instead of detection. Like I said, it has a faster reload than your detection bloom can go down. So there's no reason to take detection in this ship, if you ask me. Some of you guys ask me in the comments why I take detection in ships that shoot faster. When you're playing a cruiser, for example, you want to have the ability to disengage. And in this ship, there is you know, no chance that you're going to be able to disengage if you want to get some damage as well. Because you do have to be pumping those 457s constantly to get the high damage numbers and be impactful in this game. Because you are still a tier 9 and you do have the limits, the Yamato is still in very strong ship with 9 of these bigger, even bigger guns for 60mm. But you do have some you know, characteristics like a faster reload and better precise aim. Well not better, they're the same, but still you do get precise aiming and the dispersion is in my opinion pretty decent. It's uh, I have nothing to complain about. It's your aim it comes, comes down to and it's weird with these pan Asian ships man they are just some of them are very consistent so if you are into these um pan Asian knockoffs i would kind of call them sorry um meaning it you know they all copy a ship we already have just with different characteristics it might have might as well just been a black ship you know um with different guns but it, it nonetheless feels like a new ship and at the same time feels pretty familiar so we are pretty low and we still have this, you know, very annoying, but he played well this Hayate. He did his job, he got a lot of damage for this game. We have this Yamato pushing in and with our fast reload and his, well, slow reaction time, I guess I can say, we are actually able to just get another full salvo in and this is going to finish him off easily. He has no chance to survive these four shells coming in. Oop. And another Citadel. We were, we're five Citadels winning the game on this final Yamato. So 122k with a lot of bot damage we have to remember, but still I think this is a pretty consistent and fun ship. I don't know what rating I'm going to give it because it definitely feels better than the Soyuz by a miles, but it also feels a little bit, you know, repetitive, I guess I can say. Still a fun ship and if you are into BBs with a fast reload, this is definitely for you and it does have decent AA as well. So not a bad ship in my book for sure. So we had two videos today because they released on the same date, the Rodney and the Sun Yat-sen. And both of these ships are very good. Rodney is definitely the star out of the two. But Sun Yat-sen is also a very consistent, fun, and fast-reloading 457-gunned battleship. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I would definitely say this is a fun ship, but at the same time, if it's going to be in a solo sweep, it's very expensive. You should be wary. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. My name has been Bubloon, aka Pabloon, and I'm signing out. Thank you.